I first wanted to take the opportunity to thank the Focus Ultrasound Foundation for the opportunity to be here and to present our work on incorporating immunotherapy with ultrasound mediated therapies for more efficacious cancer treatments. I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the immunogenicity of doxorubicin, as some people have touched on. And doxorubicin is a chemotherapeutic that offers a unique opportunity to pair into an immunotherapeutic protocol in that it offers it <coughs> elicits immunogenic cell death. Immunogenic cell death is characterized by changes in the composition of the cell membrane as well as the release of soluble factors that either can enhance uh, uh, antigen presentation and also stimulate T effector cells. We found in lab that doxorubicin promotes the release of HMGB1 in tumor cell lines in vitro. This was an exciting opportunity that we thought might be advantageous to incorporate into a therapeutic protocol for the treatment of cancers that may have a low prevalence of somatic mutations, such as that is breast cancer, which has more than an order of magnitude less than that of melanoma, which has seen a lot of success recently. As I'm sure most of you know, checkpoint inhibition immune adjuvants offer the opportunity to either release the breaks on the immune suppression dictated by the tumor microenvironment um, by inhibiting inhibitory pathways uh, shown here with the PD-1, PD-L1 access, or to press on the gas to stimulate both the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system to generate an anti-tumor response. Here, we assess the therapeutic efficacy of administering copper dox temperature sensitive liposomes intravenously and CPG intratumorally in a murian model of mammary adenocarcinoma. We applied three treatments of both copper dox temperature sensitive liposomes and CPG over the course of one week. This method, what we call the chemoimmunotherapy method, was administered by first insonifying a tumor injecting copper dox particles intravenously, insonifying the tumor to promote the local delivery of the chemotherapeutic, and then after to inject the immune adjuvant into the lesion. And what we found was that this treatment, what we're calling the copper dox plus ultrasound plus CPG, elicits a total regression of the locally treated tumor. As you can see, that's verified in histo in the bottom. While the contralateral tumor experienced a significant reduction in tumor growth, this effect was transient, and in all animal cohorts, the untreated lesion regrew. From, from flow cytometry and data that I have not shown here, we found that there was, a, there was T regulatory cells as well as MDSC cells located in the untreated lesion. So therefore, we developed a therapeutic protocol that incorporated a checkpoint inhibitor to try to mitigate this, where we injected anti-PD-1 intraperinatally with copper dox temperature sensitive liposomes and CPG two times over the course of a week. Unfortunately, we found that only three days after treatment, this was an extremely toxic uh, modality, and 50% of our animal cohort died. So obviously, we needed to reconfigure things a little bit, and we designed a new protocol that we, we call the priming protocol, where we administer the immunotherapy prior to the chemotherapy. And what we found is we have a very profound effect in both the treated and contralateral tumor growth, where you can see that in the, the orange bars, there is a large significant suppression all the way through day 90 of both tumors. And if you look at the outcome of the survival, it's pretty dr drastic. 50% of the animals achieved a complete response. And to further illustrate this, if you look at the treated tumors, here, you can see that all of them are completely eliminated by day 70, and while 50% of the contralaterals um, were eliminated, half of them also came back, and we found that the ones that did come back had developed a resistance to doxorubicin. Um, all right, what's the... I'm trying here. Uh, lastly, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to reiterate that this was a very rapid and systemic effect. If you look only two weeks after treatment, in the treated side, you can see that there is a large infiltration of leukocytes around the periphery of the treated tumor going towards the center where there is collagen remodeling, ghosting of nuclei, and a lot of tumor necrosis. And in the contralateral, we see that as well. There is intratumoral hemorrhage, there is a loss of cell cell adhesion, as well as tumor necrosis. Both of these tumors, two weeks after treatment, also had a large upregulation of infiltrating CD8s into the tumor. Uh, 
next slide, please. <laughs> In conclusion, we can say that after multiple immunotherapy studies with an end approaching around 500 animals for not only copper dox temperature sensitive liposomes, but also thermal ablation, we found that protocol design is really complex when pairing with immunotherapies. And while they can be extremely effective, they can also be very toxic. So, we believe that the future imaging of CD8 positive T cells and the functional inflammatory and energy assays will be critically important for assessing future therapy. I wanted to thank the lab for all the work and as well as our funding mechanisms. Thank you.